There's a secret admin email address technique that not enough people are using. I mean, it's not secret that people are talking about it in hushed voices and not telling you about it, but it's secret in that if you don't know it's there, then you don't know to look for it. Let me give you an example. We're meant to use privileged identities, right? So like a separate admin account for admin stuff which doesn't get used for web browsing or email because that protects those accounts from things like phishing. And it's generally a very good idea. But then what if I need to log in to a new third-party admin platform which will send my login details or sign-up link via an email? Do I need to use a standard account to get that email and forget all about this privileged user stuff? Or do I need to give my admin account an email address and a Microsoft 365 license or some, some kind of shared mailbox instead? That is the worst idea I've ever heard in my life, Tom. Yes, yes, it's horrible, this idea. Well, no, all of those are bad ideas. With this technique I'm about to show you, we can receive email to an account specifically for our admin to our normal address. It's quite simple, and many of you will have used it before, especially if you use something like Gmail. It's called plus addressing. You simply use your normal email address, but before the at symbol, you put something to make the email address unique for that admin user. And the stuff after the plus is ignored by Exchange when it's received. I'll show you. Uh, let me share my screen. Uh, actually, before I do, just a quick reminder, if you haven't subscribed, please do hit that button for me. It gives me an extra reason to hit the record button and let you know about this kind of stuff in the future. So when we go to enter and we click on users, I can show you that I have a couple of accounts, probably more than a couple actually, yeah, it's four accounts, but one of them is my normal user account here. And this account has a license. There it is. I have a Microsoft 365 E5 license. Now, I don't want to have a similar license for my um, admin account. My admin account, where is it? Uh, let me find it. Dean. It is this one here. And I use this for global admin stuff, as you should. It's a privileged identity. It shouldn't have uh, a license. And I shouldn't use it to log into email. In fact, it doesn't have an email address. If I go to overview and then... Um, properties and edit yeah and then to contact information email it doesn't have an email address so if I wanted to email this account or email something related to this account like for that third-party system I want to log into I can't so what we can do instead though is my normal email address is this yeah, but I can't add that because if I add that, then it will go directly to my other account. It will go directly to Dean at nextcoffee.co.uk. But, and I also I'm a, I might already have an account in that system called Dean at nextcoffee.co.uk, so I can't use that. So if we need to make it unique for this particular admin account, I can do Dean plus Dean dash ADM. Now, this can be anything at all. This bit after the plus symbol, where is it there? This can be anything at all because it's just completely ignored by the system. So when an email to this account gets received by Exchange, it will go just to this address. So I'll receive the email in my normal account, which has a license to receive email. But the person sending it sent it to this address here. So that system, which has an identity for my user, has an identity called dean plus dean dash adm at nextcoffee.co.uk. So I'll just save that and let's see if that works. So I will send an email from a different account. I'm going to send it to this address here and I'm going to call it um, test plus addressing and test plus addressing here. And then all I need to do is send it from my other email account just to prove that it works. I'm going to send it to this address. Now, the email account I'm sending, the account I'm sending it to, doesn't have any an email mailbox. So, if I show you this, um, I've just shown you it doesn't it doesn't have a license. So I can send this to that email address now, and then over in my main mailbox, Dean at nextcoffee.co.uk. In a few seconds, we should see that I receive an email from my Robopack email address. Let's see if that works. And there it is. So we have an email called test plus addressing from Dean Ellaby at Robopack. So that has shown that we can receive an email 
to dean plus dean dash adm at nextcoffee.co.uk to the dean at nextcoffee.co.uk mailbox, meaning we can have an identity with a different email address in the different system, but emailing the same email address that we receive email on so we can receive one-time passcodes and that kind of thing. Now, it's possible that this doesn't work in your organization, and there's one reason that might happen. So if we go to uh, admin.microsoft.com, and we can go down to show all, and then to exchange. You can go to the Exchange Admin Center a different way. I just went the long way for some reason there. And from here, we can go down to settings, and in settings, we can choose mail flow, and in Mailflow, you may have this setting turned on, which turns off plus addressing. So if you have that turned on, then plus addressing simply will not work because it will respect the plus in that email address that gets sent through rather than completely um, ignoring the stuff after it. So be aware of that. Plus addressing is pretty useful. It's not a security issue. It's, it is probably a security benefit, but it's completely up to you as to whether you want to use that. The point is, it's pretty useful for the scenario that I just gave you. Are you using this? Let me know if you've had any issues or if it works exactly like it does for me. See you next time.